Welcome to our 12th physics animation series. In previous videos, we explored how capacitors work and their capacitance equation. But in real circuits, a single capacitor isn't enough. Devices use capacitor combinations to store more charge or handle higher voltages. Let's understand how these combinations work and why they're so important. Imagine we have three capacitors, C1, C2, and C3, connected in series. But what does a series combination mean? It simply means that the capacitors are connected one after another in a single path, just like a chain. Now let's connect a battery to this series combination of capacitors. As soon as we do this, the battery pushes a certain amount of positive charge, Q, onto the first capacitor plate of C1. But here's where things get interesting. The positively charged plate of C1 repels the positive charge on the adjacent plate. This repelled charge moves away, leaving an equal amount of negative charge on that plate. Now, the positive charge moves forward to the next capacitor's plate and repeats the process. The positive plate repels the positive charge of the next plate, making it negative. The plate that loses positive charge becomes negative. This chain reaction continues across all capacitors in the series. Finally, when the last capacitor's plate sends its positive charge to the negative terminal of the battery, the circuit is complete. The same charge that the battery supplied from the positive end now reaches the negative end, maintaining a continuous flow of charge. This unique charge transfer mechanism ensures that all capacitors in a series combination have the same charge Q which is a key property of series circuits. I got a lot of question regarding that positive charge, do not moves. So here is the explanation from the perspective of electrons, not from the conventional current perspective, but from the movement of electrons, which are the real charge carriers. The battery's negative terminal pushes electrons onto the nearest plate of C3, making it negatively charged. These extra electrons repel electrons from the opposite plate of C3, leaving it positively charged. The repelled electrons move to C2's plate, making it negative, and push electrons away from its other plate, making that positive. This chain reaction continues. Electrons move to C1's plate, making it negative. The last plate of C1 loses electrons, becoming positive, and the freed electrons are pulled into the positive terminal of the battery. As a result, every capacitor has the same charge. Here's an important point to note. All capacitors in a series combination have the same charge, Q. While the charge, Q, is the same for all, the voltage is different based on their capacitance across each capacitor. We can express this as voltage across capacitor C1. V1 equals Q by C1. Voltage across capacitor C2. V2 equals Q by C2. Voltage across capacitor C3. V3 equals Q by C3. Thus, in a series connection, the total voltage, V, is the sum of individual voltages. V equals V1 plus V2 plus V3. And here this V is the voltage or a potential difference of a battery. When we connect capacitors in series, we want to find a single equivalent capacitance CE that behaves the same as all the capacitors combined. To find this equivalent capacitance, we start with the definition of capacitance, which is CE equals Q by V, that is, charge stored per unit voltage. Now in a series connection, the total voltage across the combination is this, which we have just calculated, and charge Q stored in each capacitor is same. Just after simplifying the equation, we will get 1 by CE equals 1 by C1 plus 1 by C2 plus 1 by C3, and so on, to the n number of capacitors, 1 by CN. This gives us the formula for equivalent capacitance in a series combination. Now, let's understand what happens to the overall capacitance in a series connection. Does the total charge storing capacity increase or decrease? To visualize this, imagine we have three capacitors, each of the same capacitance C, connected in series. Using the formula, we get 1 by CE equals 3 by C, which gives CE equals C by 3. So, we clearly see that the total equivalent capacitance decreases. Also, when all capacitors in the series have the same capacitance, we can use a simplified formula. If n is the number of capacitors and each has capacitance C, then CE equals C by n. For example, if we connect 10 capacitors, 
each of 5 microfarads in series, then CE equals 5 by 10, which gives 0.5 microfarad. So we clearly see that the total equivalent capacitance decreases. In fact, the equivalent capacitance in a series connection is always smaller than the smallest individual capacitor in the group. This is smaller than the capacitance of any single capacitor in the series. So, in summary for series connection, 1. The charge Q remains the same on all capacitors. 2. Voltage divides among the capacitors according to their capacitance. 3. The total capacitance always decreases. 4. Equivalent capacitance is always smaller than the smallest capacitor in the series. In the next video, we will see how charge, voltage, and capacitance are distributed in parallel circuit. Thank you so much for watching.